Here from the Kia Hyundai channel, welcome to our live video series. Today we're going to talk about the Hyundai Tucson Preferred Trend. And specifically we're going to talk about this model because although we've had it in here in the past, when we had it in here in the past, I thought, man, that is a lot of features for the dollar. It's a really good package. And of course now, given the way the global auto industry is going, it has sold so well that it is basically an order only car at this exact point in time but it's worth waiting for, it's worth ordering. And today we're gonna to go through this car in full, complete detail. That's what we do here. If you've never been here before, we look at things really in depth. So we spend about a half an hour with our vehicles. We go through things and we are live. So we take a live audience with us the whole way. If you are not watching live with us, you can skip ahead to the three minute mark if you want. That's where we have, uh, that's where we'll start with the actual content. In the meantime, we'll talk about some news, some notes, and uh, I'll also show you how to join us live if that's something that you wanna do. So. Jumping in here really quickly, we'll show you how to get to our channel. This is what our channel looks like, of course, and you've probably seen it. A lot of times this video here on the front will play. If you refresh the page exactly at two o'clock PM Eastern time, which is what we're doing right now, you will see it is replaced. We'll just skip this out a second. If you're in Ontario and you're looking to buy a Kia or a Hyundai vehicle, connect with me. You can reach out to me in the link in the description just below this video that I will place there as soon as it's done and uh, we'll connect you up. We'll be your local dealer. Uh, so you can learn to see everything through me. You can work with our dealer. We can deliver across Ontario. So we can be your local dealer. Support the dealers that support us. That's Brantford Kia, Brantford Hyundai, and Owen Sound Hyundai. Okay. All right. So there we go. Somebody says, watching this in the 2022 Tucson. That's pretty cool. Uh, so here we go. So we got about a, about a minute to kill here. So let's talk. This morning I did a bonus live video. The Kia Sorento has finally been officially announced as a hybrid and a plug-in hybrid. They are in production. They can be ordered basically now. Uh, we don't have pricing yet, but fuel efficiency is gonna be incredible. And if you wanna know what kind of fuel efficiency we should expect, well, guess what? This is also gonna have the same engine transmission. This not this exact car, but the Tucson's also gonna have the same engine transmission, powertrain, battery. It's gonna be hybrid and plug-in hybrid as well. And uh, so now we've got options on both uh, sides of the Kia and the Hyundai world where it's gonna be pretty impressive. So do they make a plug-in hybrid Tucson, somebody just asked? Yes, they do. Uh, this car will come in a plug-in hybrid. And again, the Sorento was just announced with the same thing. Fuel mileage is incredible. Uh, 51 kilometers of uh, rated range on the Kia side. I think it's a 53 or so on the Hyundai side. Just slight differences in the weight and the body. So pretty cool there. Also, if uh, you like this vehicle, you're probably gonna like the, or maybe you will, maybe you won't like the Santa Cruz, which is Hyundai's pickup truck. The interior is very similar to this car. We just did a video on the Santa Cruz before it was even released. Uh, so that's pretty cool that we got to do that and we'll do that then. All right, we're at three minutes in. Do me a favor, guys. If you haven't hit the like button, hit the like button right now. Uh, just that's for my regulars. Those of you who I need to earn like from, I'm totally willing to do that for you. All right, here we go. This is the 2022 Hyundai Tucson Preferred Trend Package. And I want to show it to you really quickly online so we know what we're looking at because it is kind of a great deal. So let's just go back for one second here. We'll look at the trim number. Trim is a preferred. So again, one up from the base model, about 30 grand, just over 30 grand, MSRP. We're gonna select that. We're gonna go to the next button and you're gonna have it with all-wheel drive and we're gonna put the trend package on, 2,600 bucks for this trend package. What is the trend package? We'll look at it. It's got a lot. Oh, the all-wheel drive, the panoramic roof, the LED taillights, uh, you know, everything that's included in this package is what you get. And it's a lot. So we're gonna go through what those are, what they mean. Uh, how that works for you and if it makes sense. And uh, so there you go, 35-ish thousand because you add the all-wheel drive as well as the trend package together. And uh, that's roughly the price of this vehicle. Now, really quickly, because this is at this point an order-only car, the car I'm dealing with today is plated and it is a, a demo model. So there may be somebody's stuff in here that's not mine. And um, that's why it's plated, that's why we have it. All right, let's dig in. First thing I wanna show you is the key fob. Key fob, of course, this is a keyless entry car at this point. So you have keyless entry, lock, unlock, hold the uh, trunk button, and the hold button, that hold button is a remote start button. So you do have remote start on the key fob. That's kind of a big deal. They didn't used to always have that. Uh, again, you're moving up from the keyed car and uh, that's a nice feature. Throw the key in my pocket, I'll never need it the rest of the video. Keep it in my pocket if I want. You have the little buttons in the doors here, but you also, I don't know if I can film it, Let's see if I can get in there and film it. Maybe I can, maybe we'll try to unlock it and lock it. Uh, there we go, yeah, you can kind of see. There's no, uh, maybe there's a little light by my finger. You can see reflecting on the door there, that white square there. 
right there on my finger. You can see that light on my finger. There are lighted door handles in here. So when you unlock this car at night, you can see the little bluey or yeah, just faded out there. That is a reflection of the light on the back of the door handle. So when you approach this car at night, even the door handles light up for you, which is just a nice little feature that you used to only see on very top of line cars. Now you're seeing it. And again, this lower trim line, excuse some of the dirt in here. Like I said, this car is being driven by someone right now. Powered seat with a power lumbar, leather seating surfaces, power windows, locks and doors, of course. But then you jump in here and you've got a pretty nice looking dash layout. So again, not the full digital dash that we saw in the Santa Cruz just a day ago, but just about everything that you need for information. So we're gonna turn the car to the on position, but not start it because we are indoors. Ignore the service required. Like I said, this is being driven here. And uh, left side, we have the speedometer, right side, is the um, tachometer, which is the opposite of where we used to do a lot of our um, uh, gauges. So we used to have the speedometer and tach switched. Uh, the digital dashes now seem to have the speedometer on the left. And this is a kind of a unique view. It starts on the bottom, goes up to the top, and uh, just like Drake, that's funny if you understand what I'm talking about. It's not if you don't, that's fine. Uh, right side, we have a speedometer over there. And of course, in here, you have all the information you would need. A couple things that I really like in here, you've got your speedometer. Ignore fuel efficiency because this has been idling with me today, although not bad, 8.9 liters per 100 kilometers, 8.7. Uh, but I have been doing this for doing a few things in here. Uh, what I'm looking for is this all-wheel drive bar graph. So of course, it is an all-wheel drive. You can see your all-wheel drive system at work, which is pretty cool, and your tire pressure monitors there as well. Lane keep, of course. Uh, driver attention warning so uh, that you know keeps an eye on you so one of the things i really like about this is um somebody says watching from the waiting area Brantford kia that's cool all right uh so here we go well, that doesn't make sense actually whoever that was all right down here is something that i really quite like on this package you have the lane follow assist so of course we have lane keeping assist in this car but the lane follow assist is just a more precise way and in fact there were times where this car didn't see the lane markers but it was still following the car in front steering itself basically what those systems do is they do steer the vehicle yourself and keep it centered in the lane now you can't take your hands off the steering wheel you're not supposed to but if you do like me i've gone two minutes plus with my hands off the steering wheel with this system engaged. It's pretty crazy how well it just keeps it centered in the lane, goes around gentle bends in the uh, road. It's very impressive and you have it here on this package here. The other thing that you have on this package is this really clear, nice screen. A lot of you don't like the screens that sort of pop up out of the dash on that iPad looking raised thing. So this is in the dash and uh, ignore the reflections of me. The reflections here with one eye of the camera reflect back perfectly, but with two eyes, they kind of diffuse together and they don't look nearly as bad. Uh, but what's cool about this screen here is it's easily within reach. It's not way up on the dash over here on our thing. So if you need to touch anything here, it's easily within reach. It is wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. And you guys know that if you have that and you wanna get it right in my books, you should also have a wireless charge pad, which this does for your phone. So you set your phone there, it's wirelessly charging. It's also ventilated on that charging pad in case it gets a little warm with your car. And then you have, of course, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay wirelessly in there. The radio in here is a pretty good system. It has satellite radio as well as FM and AM. We're gonna leave it off for now. I don't wanna change the station of the person who was uh, driving this vehicle. Let's check out the all menus for a second. You can see you have Blue Link in this car as well. And that's where things are kind of getting crazy. Blue Link is a cell phone app. Used to only be on the very top line trims. Panoramic roof used to be only on the very top trims. Uh, the self uh, steering features, lane keep and lane follow assist is as good as the top trims of any of these cars. Um, wireless phone charging and the wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. This is a very well equipped car for the price. It's got some of those higher end features. You also come down here and you have the automatic climate control system, which is a dual zone automatic climate control system. This person has it set to Fahrenheit. You can do it to Celsius as well. And we're gonna turn it down just a little bit, keep it quieter in here. Uh, so you can set Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit and Celsius, volumes up and down. Now in the Santa Cruz, we had a 10 and a quarter inch screen and no volume knob. This one's got a volume knob there. We also had no um, physical button for the up down arrow. This to me is doing it right. The Santa Cruz I don't have a huge problem with, but it is nice to have that up down commonly touched buttons are actual buttons. Less commonly touched buttons are um, not actual buttons and I'm okay with that. The diffuse feature is pretty cool. I've, I wanted to talk about this for a while, but I want to make sure I understood it. Uh, the lights turned off outside the room, but you see here, there's the obvious vent over there. And then there's all these little perforations in here. 
all of those perforations all the way across the dash, including through here, including up into here. You can see those little perforations there. That diffuses the air. It does exactly that. It diffuses the air across the entire front of the car and makes it very comfortable. Um, you don't have that blasting vent from the one side. You have even air coming out diffused across the whole thing. It's hard to describe how cool that is um, and effective it is. It just kind of spreads the air across the whole way and diffuses it nicely. And uh, yeah, it's really quite a nice system to have to just sort of gently spread the air over. So again, automatic climate control there with a diffuse system there. We're gonna turn it off just to keep the battery up on this car. Uh, on this particular trim line, you do have the actual gear shift, just like the Santa Cruz. Higher trim lines have the push button gear shift. Some people like it, some people don't. Um, I'm kind of neutral. Both are good in my books. I've gotten used to the push button. And then, of course, in Canada, you have the drive and terrain modes here. So drive modes, we'll show you quickly. We've got a few. If we can get the camera up there. Uh, there we go. Drive modes. Eco, normal, sport, and smart. So that's pretty much as mo the most drive modes you can have. Now, sometimes they replace the eco with the um, smart mode. And you can see the outside colors are changing on the outsides of the gauges there with your thing. So just kind of thing, you can tell at a glance what drive mode you're in. I like to keep it in smart. We'll explain why in a little bit. Terrain modes, when I hit the terrain mode, you also have the snow, the mud, and the sand mode. So pretty cool system because in the States, they don't usually have that system. They usually just have the four wheel drive lock button, which uh, kind of is a blunt control. Whereas we have really precise controls over all aspects of your all wheel drive traction control, even vehicle stability control, those kinds of things. It's a really good system that works very well, but some people say, what if I'm driving in smart mode and all of a sudden I come across some snow? Do I need to hit the snow mode right away? Nope, you know, the all wheel drive system works really well without it. It just optimizes everything for the conditions that you're actually driving in and it works really well. So you've got that kind of nice system in there. And then you've got little things like, if I can show you here, hill descent control, the electronic parking brake with, uh, um, with the auto hold feature. And you also have a really clear backup camera. Let's just show it to you now. Clear and also uh, very wide angles. You can see, you can see beside the cars behind us, you got really clear marking of the floor. Now this is filming in a darker room. The lights have turned off in our room because it's a motion sensor light and I didn't, uh, it's blocked by the cars and I didn't walk by it earlier, but really nice backup camera that's really clear. And uh, yeah, you can just sort of see, like I said, every line of the floor, even when it's dimly lit. And then you come back here a little further, you also have heated seats and heated steering wheel. So three levels of rump roasters, as I like to call them, and that heated steering wheel, which is just, again, a really nice combination of things in this package. Taking a look again, we showed that panoramic roof, but uh, some people say I always forget to open this. So let's do that right now. You can tilt it up like it is, or you can just open it all the way. It does not appear to open the whole way. It still gives you a pretty good opening above your head. And of course, when it's, um, when the, glass is just there it's uh excellent for um you know visibility that kind of thing you can close off a whole panel if you want we'll do that right now for you so we can close the roof and you can see that covered panel is coming in waiting for it to close coming all the way in one touch and it's done when you have it like this especially at night if your guests get in they don't even know that you have a sunroof meanwhile you just tap it one tap and that whole uh panel goes back so again you have these large glass panels front and rear very large panels there and it really opens up the entire vehicle uh, which is pretty cool so i really really like that a couple of the nice touches here while we're looking up here white led uh, map lights so they're very uh, bright white which is nice because it makes it feel a little more rich in here so overall really good stuff what we're going to do right now is we're going to go take your questions uh let's see if we can get to let's see if we can get to 40 likes we got 17 likes right now do me a favor guys hit that like button to see if we can get to 40 likes if you all hit together it'd be great and um it'll save you some hassle and then we'll take your questions we're going to turn the light on this room again by walking over past it over here there we go we're also going to show you rear seat space trunk space we'll talk about powertrain if you want to know a little bit more about that and we'll answer your questions so let's uh do all of that right now first thing we'll do is take your questions and i should have grabbed some water today but i didn't so <laughs> a little bit dry in the throat in here today okay let's see what we've got does the standard Gen 5 without navigation have an update yet for the new look? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. There's a, I don't think there's any software update on this car yet. Um, if you're talking about the eight inch screen or the 10 and a quarter screen, I'm not sure what we're talking about. All right. 
Somebody says they're watching this in 2022 Tucson. That's pretty cool. Hey, not a lot of questions yet. Perfect. All right, if you guys have questions, feel free to ask them right now. We're going for 40 likes, so we're going to have two, three, four hundred people on this video at some point during the thing. Any updates on the new Sportage yet? We usually talk about that off topic, but the short answer is nothing yet. As soon as we have that, of course, it's built on the same platform as this. As soon as we have that, we'll make a video for you. Just like, just like we did this morning on the... Um, on the uh, Santa, sorry, not Santa, on the Sorrento um, hybrid that came out. So we did, when we get information, first thing I do is make a video. You can subscribe and make sure you see that as well. Towing capacity, great question, 2,000 pounds. So unlike the Seltos, which we should review just, uh, I think, yesterday, uh, Seltos can't tow. This is a little bit larger, and you're about to see that when I jump in the rear seat, but you also have some towing capacity on this, which is kind of nice. All right, sharp kind of edges here. Uh, I think it looks pretty sharp in person. Depends on the color. Some colors look better, but you've got some pretty cool, it's hard to do these manufacturing of these lines like kind of that. So it just adds kind of a cool uh, character lines. And as we jump in the back seat, again, this vehicle and the Santa Cruz share a platform. The difference is the Santa Cruz is actually much longer, but they do shorten the rear seats in the Santa Cruz. In this car, they are immense for this class you have so much space. So let me just jump, I feel myself getting in here. Very easy to get in and out. And headroom is massive because you've got that glass panel. Uh, even over the this side here, you've got good room here, but where I'm sitting underneath that glass panel is great. My legs are flush on the seat, which is what I wanna see when I'm in a rear seat. But this is hard to explain how big that is. Um, like I said, the Santa Cruz, the seats are more forward. My knees are kind of like this in the Santa Cruz which is again, based on the same platform. Over here, I mean, really good rear seat space. And the other thing you can do this car, you can recline. Oh, I can't recline much because I've got the um, rear blinded, which we'll show you. But if I move that out or put it in a different spot, I could recline even more. Uh, but the seats recline here as well. So absolute top marks here for the rear seat. And I'll show you what else is really good about it. You've got a pocket right here which is really nice. Uh, you can put anything you want, driver and passenger side. Plus you've got the vents, plus you've got the dual USB ports. And then in the door itself, you have a cup holder or bottle holder there as well. In addition to the center armrest, which the Santa Cruz does not have. And there's your center armrest there as well. Santa Cruz doesn't have it. I found out why. It sounds like the uh, subwoofer is in the Santa Cruz behind that, where that armrest would be. So they use that space for that instead. Better sound, no armrest. I'm okay with that compromise. Anyways, and I keep saying Santa Cruz because again, the Santa Cruz shares a dash, shares a basic platform with this car. So uh, we've done videos on both and you can really compare them both if that's what you're interested in. So really good top marks for the rear seat space. And again, if you're looking at a smallish crossover, rear seat space has gotta be class leading in here. The other thing that's class leading is trunk space. First of all, take a look at these lights here. This is that LED lighting package. They don't show up great on camera. It looks way better in person, but there's a real 3D kind of effect to the lighting through the side. This lighting just looks exceptional throughout. And a lot of our cars are kind of that uh, yellow lights around the license plate. These ones are white ones as well. The overall modern and rich look of this car is fantastic. The other thing that's different back here you have the Hyundai logo that's buried into the glass here. So this is a flat panel of glass. And do you notice there's no rear wiper? There actually is a rear wiper, but it's in a better spot. It's up here underneath the spoiler and it wipes down on the window. So again, swings down. The reason that's really good is if you've lived in Canada or anywhere where it snows, your wiper sits here and those little lines in the window, they defrost all of that frost and snow on the back window. And then it sits there and you park the car and they melt and it freezes on that wiper. And then of course you go to use that wiper and it's frozen and you rip your blade off. That's not a good place for the wiper. Not only does it look better hidden, it's also way more practical hidden. Now this floor in here, when we pop this up, is a lowering floor. It can lower just a little tiny bit. So we'll show you that, but I'm not gonna do that because there's some stuff in here. Again, this is cars being driven by someone else. You do have a spare tire there. You have a little bit of underfloor storage spaces in there. Also places to stick shoes and other things down there. And again, you can see I can drop it from the tray that it's on to the tray that it can go to uh, quite easily. So let's pull it out, push it back in. But because there's some things in there, we'll leave it like that. Because even left like this, the Tucson lists as having more space than the Santa Fe, which is a larger vehicle. Now, I think some of the Santa Fe has some underfloor storage. I think that is technically bigger, but this is big and it's got the roller blind there as well. And how big is it? Well, I like to use my teddy bear as a teddy bear test because you can compare across my videos how big the trunk is. 
and this one is excellent. When you start stuffing Teddy in here, put his back or his body against the back of the seat, you could pretty much fit two teddy bears in there. He'd be a little squished on this side, uh, maybe have his arm around his teddy bear, but as far as his body goes, easily two teddy bears in there. That's a big trunk. It's just, it's a lot of junk in the trunk if that's what you wanna take. It's very, very good. It's one of the real strong points of this car. And I think I should talk about driving as well. If we're talking about um, the car, I know I don't do the drive reviews. I let other people do a better job of that. The car rides very smoothly. It shifts well, has good power, not excessive power, but it's not underpowered in any way. Some car magazines will say something ridiculous. I read something like, oh, it has trouble keeping up with traffic. No, it doesn't. You just give it a little throttle, it revs a little bit, and it goes great. Uh, there are more powerful versions of this car, but um, the efficiency, the overall general drive around town feel of this car is fantastic, and the size is excellent. So, you know, when you're trying to knock one brand because you have to appear to be non-biased, even though car reviewers have to be biased or they don't get the cars from the manufacturers, uh, that's what they tend to pick on is there are crossovers with a little bit more power. And in fact, the Tucson is available with a little bit more power. Uh, this one has a very good balance of efficiency and, um, and overall drivability. But smoothness down the road is a strong point for this car as well. Coming out front, you've all seen the Tucson's front lights here. So they're a little bit dimmed right now, but those are your daytime running lights and those are your headlights there. So daytime running lights, uh, of course, blend into that grill there. You've got the sort of the dark tint here. I personally think a color like this gray is better than black on here. Once you go black, the entire thing just kind of looks black and you kind of lose some of that detail, but just a little bit of a contrast like this is that little gray color versus just the black. Uh, kind of makes the whole thing stand out. But of course, you're going to recognize a Tucson come down the road anytime. If you've seen the Santa Cruz, the Santa Cruz is a completely different grill, but to some people it looks identical. The Santa Cruz only has three of these layers. This has one, two, three, four levels up. And your headlights are down here. Nice bright LED headlights, bright white. The nice thing about an LED headlight is when they are that bright and you mount them that low, they can really light up the road very well. And uh, you can see a nice sharp cutoff nice bright and because they're mounted low they're not shining in people's eyes like a lot of suvs would if they sit a little taller so really smart design really good looking design it's hard to beat the trim on this uh, the trim package on this car so let's take a quick look again here to your questions i think one thing i will do is go under the hood today i'm trying to move through things a little quicker than i have in the past uh, but we'll do a little exterior review in a second and we'll probably go under the hood all right, does fully loaded Tucson have the remote park feature where you can push the button on the fob and it will move like the Sonata? Yeah, smart park. So if you go to the top of the line this, you pull out your key fob and you're gonna have two buttons in here, like one there and one there that says move it forward and move it backwards. And you can hold those buttons down and assuming it's all clear of everything, it has little sensors all the way around the car, it can actually drive the car forward and stop it or drive the car backwards and stop it when you hold and release the key fob. Pretty cool system. You can get that on the Tucson, just not on this trim line yet. All right, very limited questions on this car. The reason I'm doing this car, to be very honest, is the Tucson has been popular with you guys. When you look at what you guys are searching for uh, on our channel and what you're searching to get to our channel, Tucson has been popular. So if you have questions, feel free to ask it. If you're not on live with us, no big deal. Uh, you can um, still ask us questions afterwards. Does it have fog lights? Not on this trim. Uh, these lights here, a lot of people think they are fog lights, but I'll show you they are, are high beams and uh let's see if i can turn them on and they will be auto high beams on this car so we'll go to the headlights and then turn them on yeah so i'll show you right here uh just to prove that they're not fog lights headlights are up top and high beams are down low which are again very bright if i can get to the right line there but yeah so there's no fog lights and to be fair i don't know that you would gain a lot of light given the headlight positioning Instead of being up here, it's a little bit lower. Um, you're kind of filling in that fog light type area with a good spread of headlight, and that makes it really well. Which spot, which trim has the blind spot camera? So if you have the digital dash, and so that's the digital dash in here, the 360 camera over here, then you also have the blind spot uh, package, and that is the ultimate for sure. Uh, I'm not sure if the limited has that, but the ultimate package definitely has it, which is the top trim line, and of course, different things wasn't completely off topic besides but do you review other cars besides Kia and Hyundai and Genesis uh no not really uh I stick to the Kia Hyundai of course I work for a dealership group that's Kia and Hyundai vehicles so my goal is to give you the absolute most in-depth uh reviews of Kia and Hyundai vehicles 
and, uh, and therefore I don't work for other dealer groups, so I don't uh, review their cars now. That doesn't mean I don't take an interest, doesn't mean I don't do a whole lot of studying that doesn't show up on film. Uh, I am very up to date on what other cars are about, uh, and if I'm not up to date, I usually try to be honest about that. Uh, so, uh, but I don't actually review them on camera. I used to be an automotive reviewer before I did this job, so uh, I have reviewed all sorts of things before. Okay, let's keep going down here. I think we answered all your questions. If you don't have any, if you have a question, feel free to ask it. We're gonna take a look here, a couple little details. The roof rack system is really smart. Again, with a panoramic roof, you have to be careful. Oh, is it all wheel drive? Yeah, good question, this one is. Um, roof rail up here, it's a one piece system. A lot of time we used to do a three piece system where you couldn't mount a rail further back here, uh, but you can mount the rails anywhere you want. So if you're a kayaker like me, you can really spread your rails quite far and uh, put your kayak up there, which is what you wanna do. And you also have uh, the ability with that panoramic roof to use these. Sometimes with certain panoramic roofs, they, they don't want you putting a lot of things in the roof rack, but you can do that here. You can put your kayaks, your bikes, those kinds of things up here. Somebody asked, can I do a review of the Genesis G80? Uh, we don't sell Genesis at our Hyundai stores, although I probably will mix some Genesis in here eventually at some point. Uh, right now we're still just really busy with our Hyundai and Kia uh, stuff, but um, certainly Genesis would be interesting to have in here and I'm willing to do that. I've had a Tucson for three weeks now and I love it, says Donna J. Yeah, and that's the thing. Those of you ordering this car, and that's the thing, you will be ordering this car right now, you're probably going to love it. It's absolutely a great deal. So key things for me, the overall drivability, the car drives well, handles well, corners, brakes, everything is really good that way. Those smart technologies like the smart, uh, the um, lane keeping assist, lane follow assist, and the smart cruise control. I don't know if I pointed the smart cruise control out. So that smart cruise control keeps the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. So now you can go down the road, the car can keep itself centered in the lane and it can keep the distance by braking and accelerating on its own, especially in stop and go traffic that's useful. Makes this car really great for road trips, plus the panoramic roof, plus the all wheel drive. And I should point out the all wheel drive system, how it works. A lot of our competitors, the wheels have to spin and lose traction before they send power to the rear wheels. That's not how this system works. This system works by all four wheels receiving power, and as it notices no slippage, it will move power to the front wheels only. Now I say front wheels only, it's actually only 95% and 5%, so you're always all wheel drive, but for fuel efficiency reasons, you wanna go with primarily just front wheel drive uh, at some point. So being the opposite, if you have to wait to lose traction, and then give these traction, sometimes that can just push you off the road. Other times, when you lose traction and your rear wheels are supposed to regain you traction, that doesn't work well. The car gets real squirrely, becomes un, you know, unfamiliar in the handling. Whereas this system, because it starts with all four wheels receiving traction and says, hey, I'm fine, so I'm gonna move power forward, um, that is a huge difference in winter driving. And this H-Track system is really good and it monitors, um, you know, many different things, many, many, many times per second. It's way quicker than you can react. And uh, it's just a really good system for keeping you in control and keeping you good. All right, we were gonna go for 40 likes. There's 37 you still on right now. Um, oh yeah, no getting past dirty. I'll show that out as well. We're gonna go for, uh, there should be two, three, 400 people on. There's 37 people on. We're going for 40 likes. Let's see if we can get nine more likes. We got 31 right now, 32. That's awesome, guys. All right, pants getting dirty is a really good point. If you've ever had an SUV, the SUV sits a little taller. So when you get out, you don't step away from the car, you step down from the car. And what that means is your pant is going to rub against the uh, door sill here. Now on this car, you can see it's, it's a taller door sill than a regular car. On this car, when you get out, if your pants happen to rub against there, you don't have to worry because this panel wraps around and has a rubber seal uh, not the rubber seal there, excuse me, that's plastic. This is a rubber seal here. And what that does is it keeps all the dirt out of this upper area. So if your pants rub against that area there, they stay clean. It's such a silly little thing, but when you have nice pants on, you don't want that salt stain from the salt on the Canadian winters. Both front and rear doors wrap around with a rubber seal. It keeps the dirt out of that area. It's a really smart feature. Somebody else said, can you open the fuel door? I can do that. There's a fuel door right there, uh, pretty basic stuff. You just pop it off, throw it in the cap right there. And if you lock the car, you can see how easy it was for me to pop this open, uh, press it there and it comes out and comes like that. If you lock the car, that will not open. So locking the car locks your fuel door as well. All right, we're three likes away from 40. Uh, we were trying to get the 40 likes. We have 40 people on right now. So 
Now, some of you holdouts want to hit that like button. We can get there. We're half an hour in right now. If you have some off-topic questions, I can help you out. Uh, but let's just stay with it for a second here. Will you show a driving test review, preferably off-road, to show the off the all-wheel drive features? So every winter, as soon as it's a snow day, I grab an all-wheel drive vehicle and I take it out of these bays and we do a whole bunch of different off-road type stuff. We've done that in the past with only the Kia vehicles. We used to be a Kia-specific channel. Uh, I will do that in the off-road. I don't do a ton of... Um, I don't do a ton of uh, drive reviews because frankly, other people do those better than I do. Um, I would like to do some of those and we maybe do those, but we got to balance that out and make sure it works for you guys. And, uh, but I will absolutely take this off-road this winter, uh, including parking lots that aren't plowed, uh, various levels of traction, up and down over curbs. We've done that and you can really see the all-wheel drive system in action. So we do that. Can we see the key fob? Sure, we saw it just earlier in the video, but there's the key fob right there. Remote start on the key fob right there. Uh, hold for your panic button, lock and unlock, backside, pretty simple stuff. You can press this button here, and if I can do this with one hand, ooh, this is gonna be tricky, ooh, there you go. There is how you get the key out of the car if you needed to. So let's put that back in. Come on, sorry, I'm working with two hands here, one hand's on the camera, uh-oh, there we go. I'm Here, let me just put the camera down for a second, I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. All right, camera down, key fob like that. Try to do this on camera instead. All right, trying to do this one, with one hand was not working. So that goes into there, click it in, hear the click, and you're all good to go. Now, I have videos online showing you that if you had to get in this car, because let's say the car battery was dead, um, there's a little button in here. You would have to press your key into there. That pops out, there's a little key lock in there, turn it, and you can get into your car. So I have videos online, and there we go. All right, guys, we're going to leave you there. Uh, you guys can decide if you want to leave me hanging at 39 likes or if somebody wants to hit that like button. I've given you a half an hour of my time. The only thing I ask in return is one click on the like button. That takes a couple seconds. Uh, also, if you're interested in seeing more about these vehicles, we'll cycle the entire Kia and the entire Hyundai lineup through this uh, video bay. And uh, you can hit the subscribe button and we will make sure we cover every detail. Whether you're with us live or not, you can follow us. And hey, I got my 40th like. Thanks, guys. All right, so just so you guys know, I am here tomorrow. We'll do a Kia product of some sort. At least that's the plan. I'm willing to flex on that. Um, but we, I am here tomorrow. I take another little uh, six-day vacation or so starting on Thursday. So there will be lots of videos for you guys to watch, but nothing live. And I'll be back next week, Wednesday or so. So again, tune in with me tomorrow. We'll have some fun. And we're getting pretty close to our 10 million views. We always celebrate million views. So stick around. By early September, we'll have 10 million views. And uh, that could be fun. So... Thanks everybody for joining us. We will talk to you all again soon. Have a safe evening. We'll see you tomorrow.